My guest today is Adam Heckman. Adam, how you doing? Welcome to Two Tech Guys Between One Artificial Plant. Be be between one fern. Between one between, fern. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, which one of us is going to be Zach Galifianakis? I think that better be you. Okay, I'm Zach. What are we going to talk about today? Um, would you like to talk about what Microsoft is doing in the civic space? I'd love to. That's, that's part space? of your job, right? Yeah. What is yeah, your job? To, um, I'm it the, changes every time I ask this question. <laughs> Just considering that I haven't really changed many jobs, um, I'm the Director of Technology and Civic Innovation in Chicago. Uh -huh. And what that means is I'm taking a look at what some of the civic and social priorities are of the city of Chicago and seeing where Microsoft can be helpful, where we can put some of our resources. And those resources can be anything. It could be money and technology, but it could also be thought leadership and connecting to our networks and our partners. That's pretty cool. So you're taking technology, which we're all working with, and you're applying it specifically to uh, essentially one customer or one type of customer. Or a very broad spectrum of customers, because I'm working with um, government leaders, civic leaders, community leaders, community organizers, wow. activists. Oh, okay. So what we're really working for so it's much is, less focused than I originally thought. It's it's the people of Chicago. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. All right, what kind of things are, are uh, these groups focused on? Well, one of the things that I'm particularly interested in is the future of Chicago's workforce and how we can make sure that in the in the technology field that the technology workforce in Chicago looks more like Chicago. So one of the things that I've been doing is I've been um, helping out with certain programs that focus on building equity in computer science education. Okay. So that in the future, we see more women in technology, we see more people of color in technology. How do you do that? You start early. So how do you get young men, young women, boys and girls, how do you get them interested in careers in computer science? And then how do you build the capacity to teach them computer science? I've been really interested in some of those programs. Okay, so when you say you want the tech field to be more, look more like Chicago, you're talking about there's a lot of diversity in Chicago. Right. And gender diversity and... But there's not a lot of diversity, diversity in the tech industry. And there's not so much in there. There's a lot of underrepresented groups. That's that are right. well-represented in the city, but not represented in the tech community. But fortunately, there's, um, there's a lot of programs that are going on here in the city that are working on that, uh, more okay. so than you would, you would think. And how are you helping? Um, well, one of the things that we're doing is providing grant funding, but we're also providing um, our our own networks, um, providing our partners. When you providing... say network, do you mean computer networks or do you mean people networks? People networks. Okay. Let, me, let me give you an example of right. one of the pro one of the, the projects or two of the projects that I'm I'm really proud of. One is called Make CS. Make CS. The lead partner in this, the lead nonprofit, is the Museum of Science and Industry. And what I love the, that place. Uh, everybody loves that place. Everybody remembers like the coal mine, remember when you were a kid and you know, scared the whatever out of you. <laughs> um, what this program does is they Museum of Science and Industry partners with the Chicago Public Schools, the Chicago Public Libraries, and the Greater YMCA of Chicago. And it's about building capacity. It's about teaching teachers how to teach computer science, hmm, right? Okay. So, but they do this in the context of a makerspace. So who better to teach using makerspaces than the Museum of Science and Industry, right? right? So here's what they very do. Very hands-on place. Very hands-on place. And this is a very hands-on program. They'll take two or three teachers from um, an under-resourced school and they'll provide them with training on how you teach computer science and how you do it in a makerspace. And once those teachers are trained, they'll go and they'll build that makerspace at that school. And if you think about this, the makerspace can be used by the teacher to teach computer science. Mm -hmm. It could be used by any students, whether they're in a computer science class or not, to make their ideas come to life. But then it could also be used by the parents to refresh their skills. You know, you can go into a neighborhood that was traditionally manufacturing and now teach them how to do additive manufacturing, you know, the next thing. Or Very just to sharpen cool. their digital skills. Yeah. I uh, Growing up, I think I had one computer science class in ninth grade, and I didn't have a very good teacher, and it was very boring. And I never, Was it in COBOL or BASIC? Or? Uh, I don't remember the language it was. It was probably BASIC. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I wiped it from my memory, and I didn't realize at the time how fun 
computer right. science can be. Right. It was, and it wasn't until I was 30 years old I got now, <laughs> I now, changed now, careers. Add little David and put him in a maker space right. and say, believe it or not, you're learning computer science right. by building something. It's very exciting for a, for a kid. Very cool. What else is going on? Um, another program we have going on is, um, and then I can talk about the other things that we do, is uh, Chicago City of Learning. Chicago City of Learning helps students, parents, teachers, principals figure out where in the neighborhood a student can learn using the city as their canvas, right? Hmm. So let's say uh, I'm David, um, I went to that ninth grade computer class, and I want to do some more, but my school doesn't provide more. I can go to Chicago City of Learning and take a look at the map of where else I can do some learning. Maybe there's, uh, there's programs at my local library. Maybe my Boys and Girls Club have something. Maybe my YMCA has something. But I wouldn't know to go to those things unless somebody mapped it out for me. Hmm. So we're working with them. And a group called, uh, they're, they're a partnership with Northwestern University Digital Youth Network um, and Chicago Public Schools. And Digital Youth Network is a, uh, is a, a, ba- a digital badging organization. So little David goes to the YMCA, learns something, he gets a little badge he puts in his virtual backpack. And then he goes to Boys and Girls Club and learns something about data science, gets another badge. So So the gamification to it. Yeah, right. That's cool. Yeah, I like badges. Uh, The second area that I'm working on is career pathways. Uh How do you get the unemployed and the underemployed in the city of Chicago the skills that they need using non-traditional ways to participate in the economy, right? Sure. Now we're talking about grown-ups instead of uh, now we're talking grown-ups. Little David. <laughs> um, and, and instead of little, instead of little David, we're talking David and Sweetie. David, right? uh, except unemployed. <laughs> <laughs> but let's say that you needed to um, build some skills that because the skills you have um, are not going to be as relevant as computer science skills or data science skills or whatever. I'm working on programs that, when I say non-traditional pathways, the traditional pathway is you go to four years of high school and at least four years, uh, two two years or four years of college, right? Um, and then maybe some years beyond that. What are some of the other ways sure. that you? Can that, that's a hard thing do to do if you're mid, you know, thirty years old and have a family to suddenly take four years off and go to university, right? And it's expensive. Yeah, it's time consuming. It's expensive in terms of tuition and also in terms of all that time you're not making any money. Right, and that just it's frankly there's a big segment of the city that just does not have that the luxury to sure. do that. So there are programs um, that help um, adults to get those skills that are relevant um, with a minimum financial burden and a reduced time burden. So oh, you think cool. of things like the city colleges, um, boot camp um, organizations like IC Stars. Um, I'm working on one with um, the Chicago Cook Workforce Partnership that's going to be called Chicago Codes. Hmm. Very interesting stuff. Hmm. Earlier you used a phrase, civic tech. What, <laughs> what does that mean? Civic tech, it, civic technologist, uh, it, it's, a, it's kind of a 21st century social movement for people with technical skills. So civic technologists are people with technical skills, developers, yes. data guys, and, and, and women. Um, user experience people, whatever. You have some kind of a technical skill. Um, And you want to apply that technical skill. You want to devote your resources, your skills, to the public good. And public good can be defined in a lot of different ways, right? So you may have a full-time job, but you're really interested in how technology can help with um, transit or mobility or some of the fundamental principles of democracy focus on things like transparency and accountability mm-hmm. and taking data and making it easy to view by uh, regular residents of the city. Hmm. These we, could, people, we could use more transparency. We, we, there's, there's, Chicago is really good about putting out the data sets. Like we have about 700 data sets, but civic technology, it's like food for civic technologists. They, they take that data and they say, here's what's happening in your neighborhood mm. around issue X. You want to see 
the cleanliness of the water of your beaches we're going to give you an easy way to see that we, you want to see how your your alder your alderman your councilman voted we're going to give you an easy way to see that so that's the transparency piece but there's all kinds of okay. issues so there's a lot of data out there that's available but turning it into useful information that's yeah. the challenge for the data scientists yeah i mean and, and there's civic technologists that work on things like access to social services access to social justice Hmm. Um, you know, they work with the government. The government loves civic technologists because civic technologists sort of represent the voice of the people and the voice of tech. Hmm. So sometimes the government will say, here's an issue that we want to work with our residents uh, on. Can you think of ways that technology can apply? Okay. So are, are you a civic technologist? I am a you, civic technologist. Are you enabling other civic technologists? I, I, I am trying. My, my, my skills are limited today, but I'm getting my master's in data science so that at awesome. some point, I'm going to be able to really participate in a much more meaningful way. All right, and but you're empowering other data or civic technologists as well, correct? Yeah, we How are you uh, doing that. Well, first of all, we are one of the sponsors of one of the main civic tech convening organizations here in Chicago. It's called Shy Hack Night. Hmm. Um, we're That's over at the Merchandise Mart. Correct? It's at the Merchandise Mart in Braintree's beautiful offices. Thank you, Braintree. And they, uh, the civic tech folks get together and spend half the time um, hearing from somebody interesting. And the other half, of, this is every Tuesday night, and the other half of the night they go forth and hack. Anybody can, can bring up a project and anybody can go hack. Um, we also um, sponsor the Chicago City Data Users Group, mm -hmm. which is more of a, of a users group than a hack night, where we have speakers talk about um, how they use or maybe how they produce open data. Hmm. So we've had city people, state people, uh, nonprofits, civic tech organizations, people talk about how they use open data. Very cool. Uh, anything else that we haven't talked about that we should have? I think we covered a lot of ground today. That's very cool. Uh, what's, um, where can people more learn more about what Microsoft is doing in the civic tech space? Yeah, you can go to blogs.microsoft.com slash Chicago, and you can see what we're doing here in Chicago. And where can people learn more about Adam Hechtman? On Twitter, at Adam Hechtman, A-D-A-M-H-E-C-K-T-M-A-N. And uh, be pretty active on it. Adam, thanks so much. It's great to see you. I've been with Microsoft for almost 28 years now. And I get the question a lot, what keeps me coming here year after year doing the great work that we're doing here? And I got to tell you, it's all about doing technology with my friends. <laughs>